Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something to me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Nevin. So y'all, before we, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that we are going to be moving. That's right, we're going to be moving. I am taking my partner with me and we are heading back to my hometown. Um, things have not worked out very well for us here. Um, honestly, we, we feel trapped. We feel like we don't have a lot of control. We feel like our living situation is very very unstable right now and if y'all could help us if y'all could help us um i'm going to be putting up a gofundme and i'm just gonna also encourage people to check uh, just check the patreon because like five ten fifteen dollars whatever y'all want to give it, it greatly helps us and i'm hoping to have everything moved by next month all I, all I have to do is wait on getting accept on getting accepted by this apartment complex, and then that'll be it. I'll uh, we'll we'll go across the country, back home, and pick up where we left off, and continue Drake Wing Gaming just as normal. Anyway, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, jump right in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. I understand the idea, but it doesn't work with every brand. Lighter Shadow Brand users don't have direct responsibilities, right? Indeed, but their duties lie elsewhere. In their case, it's more about the will to hold back. To hold back? From misusing their powers. It sounds simple when you say it like that, but the temptation can be great. For example, a light brand can be used to create illusions, to make people see what we want them. What we want them to see. How can we not be tempted to use such powers for our own benefit, to the detriment of others, and even sometimes to our own detriment? I've seen enough I've seen enough Argon's chosen come here covered in burns. And that's where we come back to the forgetful ones. The temptation to use such powers is strong, and with the brands we already with the brands we already have. Can you imagine what someone who with control over time, mind or death itself would be tempted to do? Let's take Nevin, for example. Have you ever imagined being able to go back, to change any of your actions, just do things differently? Another easy question. I know exactly what I would change if I could. I spent enough time thinking of better ways to act, to not cause everything that happened. I nod, just nod silently. Don't we want to risk the priest hearing my trembling voice? Of course. Everyone thinks like that. Everyone has a mistake from the past that they wish they could change. The brand of Nevin could give you that power. At first glance, it sounds fantastic, doesn't it? Again, I nod. I'm looking to see what exactly he's getting at. But what if you're not happy with the change, either? Are you going back again? To change your past again, and again, and again? Wouldn't you be tempted to experience the same moment over and over again until it was perfect? To eventually understand that perfection doesn't exist or lose your mind trying to find it? Not to mention, of course, the immense power that these brands would offer to the Chosen, to control the minds of others, or to have control over death. These very ideas are enough to make me shudder. This is why I believe that by choosing not to brand us, those we commonly call the forgetful ones are actually the kindly ones. They spare us from these temptations and from this immense power. Isn't it a proof of love? I, I've never seen it like that. It makes sense, doesn't it? It's kind of like parents keeping their kid away from fire or swords. I suppose. But that doesn't mean your idea is flawless, sir. I too am capable of pondering about these things. I think I understand, but it doesn't work for Kaluthan, does it? I, I don't know his brand would be any, I don't know if his brand would be any more powerful than the others if it ever if it ever existed. When he answers me, I feel like I hear a hint of amusement in his priest's voice. I'm not sure how to take it. It looks like you're able to pay attention to details. But yes, this idea does not work for the god of the hunt. I believe that in his case, the explanation is even simpler. Oh, really? Brands are what differentiate us from animals. It is thanks to it that we uh, that we acquired consciousness, that the gods revealed themselves to us, and that we eventually became anthracans. But hunting is something eminently natural in the wilderness. Something instinctive, I would even dare say. It happens every second of the day, day and night out here. I think that's the explanation for Kelothan's absence. His domain is nature itself. He doesn't need a brand to convey his message. Hmm, I'm less convinced this time. Sure, animals hunt, but so do we. But God is the perfect example of this idea, after all. He's a herbivore and lives like a predator. But I must admit that the idea is interesting. Maybe I can think about it a bit more another time. I... I don't know. It's a theory. Not that it makes a difference in the end. They still don't unbrand us, but I think I understand why you want to serve them, if that's what you believe in. 
Well, I didn't say I was necessarily right. It's just what seems to make the most sense to me. I find it hard to imagine the gods just forgetting about their creation. Do parents easily forget their children? You'd be surprised how often that happens, priest. Believe me, I know something about it. My interlocutor, my interlocutor stands up, briefly brushing imaginary dust from his thighs. Understanding that this is the end of our discussion, I do the same. Thank you for your time. I rarely have the opportunity to debate this kind of thing. I'm afraid my colleagues don't share my views. Second like, now, it is water time. Oh god. That's so good. <clears throat> we just came back from like a 45 minute walk in 104 degree weather. <coughs> so yeah, that, oh my god, that hit the spot. Okay. Oh, no problem. It was interesting to say the least. It gave me something to think about. I guess it's more than I could have, I could have, blah. I guess it's more than I could have hoped for then. If you ever want to talk more, you can always find me here. Unfortunately, I must, I must return to my occupation. It was a real pleasure. For me too, and I think I'll come back one of these days. We greet each other briefly, and I see him return to the altars of the, forget of the forgetful ones. What a strange priest. Interesting, but strange. I don't think I've ever come across anyone who thinks like him. A gurgling sound echoes through the contemplate, and I can immediately find its source. I am clearly hungry. It's time for me to get something to eat, and quickly. I exit the temple, finding myself back on the street. There must be somewhere I can buy something to eat my... Somewhere to eat my fill in this big city. If I needed any confirmation that I am indeed in the capital, it's done. Five copper coins for a loaf of bread. Five! And the damn thing is hard as a rock! I hope the royal palace offers us food as well as lodging. Otherwise, my purse will be empty before the comp before the competition. Hey, at least I ate something. I want to survive Prince Melwar's training on an empty stomach. I really hope he'll just ask me to watch from afar and clap when he does something impressive. A little trip around the city was quite interesting. The capital is one of the liveliest cities I've seen, and... Well, 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 if it isn't Rhaegor's little toy... Ah, oh, fuck, I easily recognize the voice coming from behind me. I should have known he would be here. Damn it. Oh. Sven! It's been so long! I almost thought I'd never see you again. That would have been such a shame. I force a smile and turn around to face my former colleague. I'm curious to see if he's changed in two years. And that's a no. The weasel is almost identical to what I remember. Barely taller than me and dressed in the most colorful clothes he could find. As always, Finn is trying to be the center of attention. And here I was hoping to never see him again when he left the troop. What in the Tessel's name are you doing here? And where's the old stinky hound? Looks like you're as charming as ever, Sven. But to answer your question, Rhaegor isn't with me and I guess we are both here for the same reason. There's a contest and I intend to win it. He looks surprised for a moment then chuckles mockingly. I don't like that. At all. Really? Now that's interesting. What happened? He found a new toy more interesting than you and kicked you out of the band too? Oh please, are you still bitter about it? It's been over two years. It's time to move on. Move on? I had an interesting job in a great band. And then one morning, you show up suddenly and I'm relegated really to doing backup vocals. Rhaegor, Rhaegor let you sing the solos whenever you wanted. Don't exaggerate the situation. You took my job. I'm better. What can I do about it? You can't blame Rhaegor for wanting to make the most entertaining show possible. Better my ass. He took pity on you and decided to keep you instead of me. That's it. The old geezer likes to play savior, and you were, this, and you were there to satisfy his need. Ooh, yeah, of course. And it's because he took pity on me that when I left, he threw me a farewell party and practically begged me to stay. That's strange. I don't re remember him doing that when you announced you were leaving. I taunted him, smiling with all my teeth. Sven has always been an asshole, especially with me, and I have absolutely no problem getting into his face. I have the immense satisfaction of seeing him able to come up with an immediate response. Watching him ruminate like this, grumbling as he searches for an appropriate answer, is a unique pleasure that I don't think I'll ever tire of. Alas, that pleasure seems to be short-lived. Louisa looks satisfied with his upcoming comeback. Whatever, his opinion shouldn't really matter now. After all, it's the kings we're going to try to please. You will try. I will succeed. Well, I have my doubts, you see. You're a good singer, Eloi. There's no denying it. But that's all you are. A singer. And I think the royal court expects a little more than that. As good as you are, without music, you are not you are not worth much. And I know that none of Rhaegor's musicians would have abandoned him. So here you are, all alone, while I have my new band with me. I'm sure it'd be very cute to see you perform all alone in front of the court. But I can give them a real show. So, 
Go on your little dreams of victory if you want, but as long as you're on your own, you have no chance of winning. I suddenly feel an urge to ram my fist into this asshole's face. Mainly because I, I know he's right. Second like, you know, water time. That water's done. Time for different. Oh my god, that hits the spot. Y'all have no idea. Alright. Okay. Well, I have perfect confidence in my abilities. I also know that a musician is necessary if I want to compete with Sven. Unfortunately, I don't have any valid arguments at the moment. Unless... Oh! <laughs> Eloi, buddy, you are a genius. But, my dear, who told you I was all alone? I can read the surprise on his face. You're bluffing. Never would one of Rhaegar's musicians have. They wouldn't have left him. Yes, I know. You're repeating yourself, Sven. Getting senile, are we? It turns out that our mutual friend doesn't have exclusivity concerning the musicians of Frostfang. Do you expect me to believe that you've already managed to find a musician? How long have you been here? Well, let's say I've been around for a very short time. It appears that, unlike you, I'm able to be friendly with people I meet. You'd be surprised how helpful that can be. As it happens, I met a loot player. Oh, you should hear him. I'm getting chills just thinking about it. Maybe even over overdoing it a bit. After all, I've never heard a cat play. But then again, I doubt anyone would offer him this wonderful loot if he wasn't at least somewhat skilled. Exaggerating reality is totally valid if I can wipe the smile off Sven's face. Oh, and did I mention that he's Macadian? I'm absolutely certain that the court will be most intrigued by his presence. And you know how the nobles love the exotic. You're lying. There's no way you could have found such a gem on the road. Why would I lie about something so easily verified? And now for the coup de grace. I snapped my fingers as if suddenly I remembered, suddenly remembered something. Oh, wait, if you doubt what I'm saying, why not ask the prince? After all, he was there to greet me personally last night. Which reminds me, he also invited me to one of his training sessions. I'll unfortunately have to leave you here, in the dust of the street. We don't keep royalty waiting. I believe that this is if, that if his look could kill, I'd be dead on the spot. I'm kind of glad he has only he only has an earth brand. I doubt I would even I doubt I would even I doubt I would have been charred no doubt I would have been charred long ago if it had been branded by Argon. Without waiting for a response, I turn around and go back to the castle, but I'm quickly stopped by his grip on my shoulder. He film squeezed me so hard it hurts. What the- Sven, let me go! I know you, Eloi. You screw up everything you do, and that's all you're good at. So be as cocky as you want. I know you're going to do something stupid. You're going to screw the wrong guy or piss off the nobles. I don't care how, but you're going to fuck it up somehow. And when you are humiliated, when our lords drive you from their court for your actions, I will have the pleasure of seeing you return to the cesspool Rhaegar was kind enough to pull you from. You'll be back where you fucking belong while I enjoy my new job. So enjoy what you have and keep being arrogant while you can. You're just a parasite, Eloi, and someone will eventually crush you. I'll be there to see the show. Believe me. Sven never had the most sympathetic tone when he spoke to me before, but I'd never heard so much venom in his voice. It takes me a few seconds to compose myself. I may not be the most eloquent, the bastard knows how to hit how to hit where it hurts. Evoking my past is one of his classics, and I've learned to ignore those little jabs, even throwing a few back at him. The idea of becoming homeless again. Well, my own fault. That's new. That that really, really hurts. I face, to, I face him, too. I don't even know why exactly. Spit on him? Punch him in the face? But he's already gone. Must have taken longer than I thought to have recovered from his insults, and he took the opportunity to leave. Shit. Well, it won't have been the most pleasant encounter, but at least I was able to return a few blows. Focus on that. Keep it positive. Oh. Sven is... Not that important, after all. He has no real power here. The only person who can screw things up is you. So we focus on the present and do what we have to do to win. And to begin with, I need to see a cat. And quickly. I just hired him as a musician without actually telling him or getting his approval. Excellent, Eloi. As always, you speak before you think. But I can fix the situation. I have a little time left before the prince's training session and a cat is probably in his room. I hope so, anyway. I should, I should be able to make a deal with him. I'm returning to the castle at a much faster pace than usual. I have a bird to hire in due form. Okay, now. Water time. Mm. Oh my god, that is so good. Strawberry bubbly water. It's incredible. Alright. I'm returning to the castle at a much faster pace than usual. I have a bird to hire in due form. Well, this morning in the capital has been strange, to say the least. Interesting, but strange. I could have done without seeing Sven again, though. It would have spared me from standing in front of a cat's bedroom, 
wondering how to ask the Falcon to work with me without letting him know I, that I had already announced our partnership, our, our partnership to someone else. To be perfectly honest, I mostly want to check on him. Yesterday's attack took quite a toll on him, and I don't want to wear and I don't want it to wear on him too much. I take a deep breath and knock on the door. A cat? And I immediately realize that I assumed he was going to spend the day in his room, which is ridiculous since there's a good chance he isn't there yet. He isn't even there. In which case, it's going to make things a lot more difficult for me. I don't really have time to search the whole castle, let alone the capital, if he decided to go out. Fortunately, the door opens a few seconds after I knock, revealing a falcon who doesn't look in his greatest shape. The kit has dark circles around his eyes, and he looks downcast. He smiles when he sees me, but it doesn't take a genius to figure out that his smile that this smile is forced. Come on, Eloi. Let's put some joy back into this poor bird. Hello, Eloi. I, I didn't expect to see you. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a super thanks or tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see y'all next time. Don't forget to check out that Patreon, y'all. Bye bye